Welcome back everyone. We're camped out here on the Sea of Cortez in Baja, Mexico, right next to the ocean. And what better time to give you a tour of our water system than right next to the water. So by popular demand, everyone wants to know how our Pepsi Keg water system works. Okay, so I've sort of unpacked our side utility compartment here a little bit to give you a little better view. Uh, these are our five Pepsi kegs. Uh, we have provisions or room for 10 of these 20 liter cylinders in here, but we only have five along on this trip. And basically, these are retired Pepsi kegs. A 10, or rather a 20 liter Pepsi keg. They're stainless steel and they have these fittings on the top referred to as ball lock fittings because the uh, connector for them has little balls on the inside that grip on the ridge there. And they're a quick connect fitting. You just lift up on this sleeve and they click on. So, as I said, we have 10 of them in total, but we've only got five along on this trip and that gives us a total of 100 liters. And we use that for drinking. It goes through our water filtration system and, uh, and washing dishes and cooking and that sort of thing. Uh, because we use a composting toilet, we don't flush a lot of our water down the toilet. And so we can actually make uh, this 100 liters go about 10 to 15 days uh, of conservative use. So that suits us just fine. So I can actually pop this lid off like this. And it's a big opening, large enough to get my big arm in there. Kara can get her arm right to the bottom. And should we get any manky water in there, we can get out get out the lid, get it opened and cleaned and sterilized right up. So in addition to being able to get our arms inside and clean them out if we have to, here's a couple other things I really like about these kegs. Uh, they're small enough that I can take one of these, throw it over my shoulder and take a hike and go and get water from the spigot at the campsite we're at or uh, oftentimes we've been at a restaurant or a diner that sort of thing and say yeah we need some water and, and can we bring in a vessel and fill it up for us and more often than not they're happy to do that and so just having a modular like that where I can take and go and get some water you know run two or three loads and get a few kegs of water has been really really helpful especially down here in Mexico where there isn't RV fill stations at every corner um, we can just get whatever water we can as we're going along and in fact many of the locals down here seem to buy their water at water purification retailers that that fill up jugs for you and uh, another reason they're on the inside like this is uh, because of freeze protection. They're inside the building envelope, insulated inside our uh, living space, so that when we're uh, camping in freezing weather, our water and all of our lines and everything is inside the heated compartment. So assuming we are not freezing, our water is also not freezing. Uh, the other really neat thing about the kegs is uh, we can kind of segregate our water so if we have fresh clean good known good drinking water I can keep it in X number of kegs and then if we pass by a stream or some other uh, questionable source of water we can keep those separate and then uh, filter as needed or use it for non potable uses like washing off the dog or whatever so the next thing is fittings. These are ball lock fittings. They're pretty cheap, I think about five bucks a piece, and uh, typical common 3 8 nylon tubing. I went with 3 8 because that's a nice common size where these ball lock fittings will, will fit right on there, but also our air compressor air lines are all 3 8 So I can use these very common push to connect fittings. This is going to vent and be loud. And so, uh, you know, that's a common size between the two systems that made it really easy to integrate. So, how does it all work? There's an in-hole and an out-hole. The inside has these uh, little plates on there typically, and the outside doesn't. And so this comes from our air compressor through a regulator, and that air regulator uh, regulates the pressure down to 40 PSI, which is about city water pressure. And so then when I click this on here, it pressurizes the keg with the 40 PSI of air, and then it wants to come out this hole at 40 PSI. So I'll use this shower wand as an example. I've got the liquid fitting, which is typically black. 
and that just clicks on there and then we would have pressurized water coming out of there. So that's a simple version of the system. Uh, we've gone a couple steps more complicated where we have five kegs and so I've made a few of these jumpers. So this allows me to uh, daisy chain them so that one will feed the next one and the next one and we usually have four wired in series and then uh, we keep one as a reserve so that when we're out of the four we know we have just that 20 liters left and to, to be mindful super mindful of water usage so that's the kegs and storage side the compressor is pretty simple here as you can see the uh, via air compressor is just tucked in this compartment here goes through the air regulator which tunes it down to 40 psi and from there it heads through the uh, through the living area here through our water filter which I'll show you next and up to the top so it's not so much more complicated than one but uh, that's really as simple as it is so moving inside now this is our dinette floor and behind this panel is where I've installed our water filter so I've disconnected the power and some other things here so I can pull it out and show you uh, basically this line here comes from our Pepsi kegs goes through the uh, sediment filter which is just a basic spun filter uh, for you know sand and rocks and then it goes through an activated charcoal granular charcoal filter and then through a block charcoal filter and then from there it comes up into the ultraviolet sterilizer which is a six watt UV light that kills all the gribblies that uh, filters can't filter out and so it should be sterilized coming out of there and from there of course it goes through the hose and over to our faucet. Water, no surprise. Uh, this uh, faucet has two lines, hot and cold. We typically only use the one cold one normally and it's your run-of-the-mill average residential faucet. We don't have a cheap plastic RV faucet, we wanted something a little nicer. And this one has the uh, wand style pull out with a sprayer, great for rinsing off dishes or whatever. And uh, we thought to eventually put a shower curtain that came out here over the entranceway and then that could be a you know, discreet shower if we weren't able to shower outside. So then on the topic of showers, this is our shower keg. Uh, we keep it separate from our other kegs. We don't plumb it in series with the other ones typically or ever. Uh, and that allows us to use whatever water we come across. So we'll fill this with clean creek water if we find a nice clean creek or whatever you know uh, tap water we find on some hose laying in the street and uh, as long as it's cleanish looking water we'll put it in here and this becomes then our shower cake. So uh, the way that works, the way we use this is of course uh, we put our water in there and then I've 3D printed this little adapter, simple little oval thing, and that keeps this Anova sous vide cooker from falling all the way in. Uh, so that sets in here, like that, and then we plug it in here, like this, and it starts up. So we set this to whatever temperature we'd like, hit start, it takes about 15 minutes to heat up, uses about 250 watt hours, which takes us five minutes to make off of solar, and uh, heats our water to the perfect shower temperature. Then when we're ready to uh, shower, we take this out, put the lid back in, go outside to the air hose I showed you earlier, pressurize it with 40 or 50 psi of water pressure, and then I just built this up really quick. The same ball lock fitting and a simple residential sink sprayer button. And that allows us to conserve some water, Clip that on there and then rinse yourself off, whatever manky bits need to be demankified. And uh, the, sh the push button's really nice because uh, rather than turn it on and then just have it spraying water endlessly, you can wet your hair, wet your nads, wet, your, wet yourself, you can wet your hair and wet yourself, lather up, do all the soapy bits you need to do, and then uh, rinse everything off. And so this works really well for that. Uh, I did have to buy this keg new, they're not very common, but it's nice because it's a half half keg size, two and a half gallons, or uh, 10 liters, and you know it's three quarters full right now, but it's still not too, too heavy. Uh, we can get this heated up and Kara can walk off into the bush or 
uh, manhandle it without too much problem. So that's uh, how that whole system ties together for showering uh, when we're out, out and about. So I hope that uh, rundown gives you a good idea of how everything works, how our water system works. Uh, we do get a lot of questions about it, so now I'll have a video to point everyone to. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.